Hello Internet and welcome back to Let's Make Asteroids in Virtual Reality. Today we're going to be working on something a little bit different. We're actually not going to be working with this scene. This is kind of where we ended over the past five episodes. Has it been five already? So what we have right now, is a few, a little bit of this is going to look a little bit different. Uh, you'll see this bar and my computer lags when I run this scene, so I'm gonna stop this, or pause it. Anyway, this bar up here is due, because I added a system called VRTK, which is a adaptive rendering solution. And so what this does is it's a algorithm that automatically adjusts the rendering performance based on the speed of your computer. So with uh, virtual reality, it's really important to have a high frame rate. And so what we need here is if rendering it in like super HD, high resolution with really fancy textures and all that other stuff is causing issues, this is going to downscale things. It's going to reduce the, uh, I believe it reduces the anti-aliasing and it also reduces the resolution. And then it scales it back up. So the advantage of this is it tries to keep you pretty close to about 90 frames per second or above. And with that, it keeps you from getting motion sickness or yeah, motion sick because with virtual reality, you notice it more because it feels relatively real. Um, so there's that. I was trying to use uh, Steam made or Valve rather made a public uh, what's it called? The lab render, I believe is what they called it. And so this is kind of taken from that, but this was ported to an open source solution that's not their code because their code is not going to be maintained. So we're using something that is. So hopefully, hopefully it sticks around. We'll see. One thing I have noticed is if I add like bloom now, everything breaks. It, it appears to be just like taking the bloom for one lens and applying it over both, which obviously doesn't work very well. So we're gonna have to explore that later. Anyway, what we're doing today is we're going to be starting making, I've been thinking about this idea. Well, actually, I've been thinking about this idea for about 30 minutes now, <laughs> not entirely too long, but it seems like a good idea, at least right now. So what we're gonna be adding is we're going to be adding some uh, grappling hooks. So we're going to add one to each controller that you can shoot out and grab onto an asteroid and pull yourself towards. And so this is sort of an alternative to the standard thrusters. So you can obviously, you know, control yourself that way. But this is going to be probably faster with more acceleration. And you're going to be able to also like pull asteroids around by doing it by like grabbing two of them and like pulling them in or something. Don't really know how it's going to work, but we're going to make it anyway. And then if it doesn't work, then we'll throw it out. So I'm going to stop this and create a new scene. So we have this. Then I'm going to stick in two new shapes. Or one new. Oh, I'm in. That's why I was in the game view. Derp. Okay. There is that. We can. Kind of make this a little bit, make it two by two by one. And all we're going to do is more or less, we haven't really worked with projectile, projectiles at all, besides the bombs, I guess, but we're going to kind of explore that. I haven't done projectiles at all, period, on this channel. So we're going to do a projectile, or at least how I'd like to do projectiles, in Unity. And this is not going to be like an instant like bullet like you'd see in like Call of Duty, for example. This one's going to have travel distance over time. So to do that, we need weapons. Let's call it just projectile. I'm going to need this class probably for some other projects. And I forgot to open Visual Studio. Why? Why do I always forget that? Another thing I've noticed uh, is, like you may have noticed a little bit back there, but my computer really seems to be having trouble with 
that virtual reality scene. And I'm pretty sure it's because at, like right now I don't have my Vive software running. So it's probably some timer or something that's kicking off and causing it to lag every so often. But it only seems to happen in play mode. So I don't know what's going on there. Either way, uh, it only happens in play and I'm not that concerned about it. So we're ignoring it. I think that's the suitable solution to that. None of these are the ones I want. Okay. So projectile is going to have some basic stuff. It's going to have a speed. And that's about it. What else? Do we want to public bool? I'm going to add an active flag here and so the idea here is we don't need this <laughs> okay never mind I was thinking we were gonna have because we're gonna shoot it it's gonna stick into something and then we don't want it to keep trying to move forward when that happens we don't actually need that we can just delete this entire component because it won't be needed that seems like the easier solution so let's create a ray. Uh, we can create it. It's going to be origin is going to be the position and the direction is going to be its forward vector. Like so. Now we need some output. So some ray cast hit. And then if it hits anything, this is going to be a little bit tricky. We're going to have to do some other math. I'm going to do float travel distance and that's going to be equal to the speed times the time delta time. And this is just so we don't have to redo this calculation over and over because we're going to need it a few times. So what we want to do is we're going to have a bullet. It's going to be moving in time, but our bullet is going to be by frame so it's going to be here and then it's going to be here and then it's going to be here and so forth and so what can happen is if it's moving so fast that and something is very thin like a window or a really small wall for example if it moves through the entire object in a frame it's not going to detect a collision and so we want something that will detect a collision especially when we're dealing with usually fast traveling objects like bullets so what we're going to do is we're going to add some extra stuff here to determine if it hits if it hits something and then if it hits something we'll move it up to that point but no further and if it didn't hit anything we'll move it the full distance so that's the idea here so if our ray that's not how we do that if our ray cast ray we want an out whoa Let's output our hit with a travel distance for the max distance. So the farthest this ray is going to check for collisions is the travel distance. And that's all we need. So if this is true, then we hit something and there's something in the way. So we can do, I believe we can set the travel distance equal to the distance. And so the distance is going to be the distance that the ray traveled before it hit something. So there's that. If it didn't hit anything, the travel distance is the full length. Otherwise, it's going to be however long it took until it hit something. So no, we don't need an else. What am I doing? Now all we need is we just need to move it forward. So we'll just do plus equals its forward vector times the travel distance and this should move it forward at equal to its speed until it gets some, near something and then it will hit it and so if this is true we want to do that and I think this isn't going to work yeah that isn't gonna work but we also, when we hit something, we want to destroy this component so it doesn't keep trying to get through it over and over. That's just a waste. Once we've already hit something, we can just leave it there. 
So actually, I'm going to copy and paste this up here quick. Go away. All right. Let's destroy this script now. So the, this is only this destroy is only going to delete this component. It's not going to delete to delete the game object. So the bullet will still be there. It just won't have a projectile component attached to it. And that's pretty important because it it keeps us from running all of this, but it keeps everything else the same. All right now that our position is correct, I'm also going to parent it to the hits transform. So whatever it hits, it becomes a parent of that. And this way, so if we shoot our grappling hook into a into an asteroid and we start swinging around, that point is going to pull it towards you or however your momentum carries you. And so we want, we obviously want this projectile to stick into it and kind of move with it. And since everything's kind of moving, we need to attach it here so it inherits some of that movement. At least that's the idea. We could probably do some really fun stuff with like physics joints or something, because with those we can have it break if a specific amount of force is applied and allow it to only like turn a certain amount and so forth. But for now, that that works. It just is a permanent point attached to that object. And now that we have, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, now that we have that. Now what? I think that's it. We should be able to go in here. And let's create just like a sphere. That works. Uh, if I could click, there we go. And we'll make it at like negative 10 with a size of point zero 0.05. Why not? We'll make it teensy. And now what we expect to happen is we expect this to hit this object and then be half in and half out of that plane or the cube that it hit. So let's add a projectile, give it a speed of like two. So this should take five, uh, five ish seconds. We will save it as a grapple test. And I'm actually going to move it down just a bit so it doesn't like clip through the camera. Just so we get some perspective on it. There we go. And bang. So you saw our projectile disappeared. And it is now halfway through our cube, which is exactly what we want. So if this was the grapple, it would now be fastened to this object. And you can see it was parented. So now if this rotates, for example, it takes the grapple with it. And so that can either pull you or do something else. And it's throwing a bunch of errors. And that's all great. Where did my mouse go? Oh, God. <laughs> I said, like, way too much there. That's fine. So it seems to be working. And that's, that's good. That's what we want. And I think the next thing we want to do is going to be we're going to add a rope. And we're probably going to have to physically simulate this, but we're going to add a rope between this little ball. I can select it there. This little ball and its origin. I think we may leave that for the next video because I think that's going to get complicated. <laughs> I don't I don't entirely know how we're going to do that cuz I ideally I wouldn't like it to just be like the, the easy way to do it is to just stick a line renderer on it and make the two points the origin and the whatever the two points connect each other with a line and you're done that works but I don't think it looks good I'd like it to kind of like look like it was like pulling and if you if anything happened it kind of did something I don't know whoa that wasn't what I wanted anyway we'll have to explore it I don't really know how that's gonna work yet so until next time uh, see you, internet